Today, we are going to talk about troubleshooting the electrical charging system on Caterpillar engines. If you are working on equipment and suspect a problem in the charging system, this video will help you identify if a component in the electrical charging system is at fault. The following components can fail and lead to low system voltage and will be tested. Battery, cables, connectors, circuit protection, alternator drive, and the alternator. The goal of this procedure is to minimize the repair time and expense, including the unintended replacement of good components. A simplified charging circuit is displayed here. The terminals for testing are highlighted as shown. These will be used throughout this video. The terminal in red is the battery plus terminal, and the terminal in black is the ground terminal. Most alternators will have these terminals labeled. If you are unsure, please consult your local Caterpillar dealer for assistance. To complete the troubleshooting steps, you will need a multimeter and a clamp-on ammeter. We will use a CAT gen set to illustrate the troubleshooting steps. These same basic steps can be applied to your engine. You will take multiple measurements when following this procedure, which can be recorded in this chart. Step one, inspect the belt drive system to see if the system is wet, oily, or damaged. If the drive belt is clean, dry, and undamaged, then proceed to step two. If the drive belt is wet, oily or damaged, then complete a repair and proceed to step two. Step two, check whether the drive belt is properly tensioned. If the tension is appropriate, then proceed to step three. If the tension is not appropriate, then correct the tension and proceed to step three. Step three, check whether the alternator pulley retention nut is tight and properly torqued. If the torque is appropriate, then proceed to step four. If the torque is not appropriate, then correct the torque and then proceed to step four. Step four, start the engine and vary the engine speed up and down. Check whether any unusual noises are coming from the alternator or belt drive components. If there are no abnormal noises, then proceed to step seven. If abnormal noises are present, then proceed to step five. Step five, remove the belt and spin the alternator by hand. Check whether the alternator feels rough to rotate or makes unusual noises. If the alternator spins normally, then proceed to step six. If the alternator spins abnormally, complete a repair, then proceed to step six. Step six, rotate other belt driven components by hand. Check whether any component feels rough to rotate or makes unusual noises. If the components spin normally, install a belt and proceed to step seven. If the components spin abnormally, complete a repair, then proceed to step seven. Step seven, measure battery voltage directly at the battery posts. If battery voltage is greater than or equal to 24.8 volts or 12.4 volts, then proceed to step eight. If battery voltage is less than 24.8 volts or 12.4 volts, then charge, retest, and proceed to step eight if passes. If battery voltage is less than 24.8 volts or 12.4 volts, then load test the battery, replace as needed, and proceed to step eight. If batteries are suspected of being bad, Take the batteries to your dealer for load testing. Load testing is the only way to verify the battery is functioning correctly. Battery voltage alone does not detect a bad battery. Please note, lead acid batteries lose a significant amount of performance at cold temperatures. Any deep discharge condition of the batteries will reduce battery performance and battery life, even after recharging. Load testing will verify if the battery is functioning correctly. Step eight, measure the battery voltage at the alternator terminals with the engine off. 
If the voltage is approximately the same as in step 7, then proceed to step 11. If the voltage is 0 volts, then proceed to step 9. Step 9. Ensure the battery disconnect switch is turned on. If the disconnect switch is closed on, proceed to step 10. If the disconnect switch is open off, close the switch and revert to step 8. Step 10. Measure the battery voltage at the alternator terminals with the engine off. If voltage is approximately the same as in step 7, then proceed to step 11. If the voltage is zero, find and repair the open circuit, then proceed to step 11. Step 11. Start the engine and set the throttle to at least 75%. Measure the battery voltage at the alternator. Connect the voltmeter to the alternator battery plus and alternator ground terminals. If voltage does not increase from step 10, then proceed to step 12. If voltage is greater than step 10 and less than 29.0 volts or 14.7 volts, then proceed to step 12. If voltage is greater than 29.0 or 14.7 volts, then proceed to step 13. Step 12. Install a clamp-on ammeter or current clamp on the alternator output cable and measure the alternator current. If current is greater than zero amps, then proceed to step 14. If current is zero amps, then repair the alternator and proceed to step 14. Step 13. Check if other power sources are connected. If other sources are connected, remove the sources and revert to step 12. If other sources are not connected, repair the alternator and proceed to step 14. Step 14. Turn on additional electric load and measure the output current. If the current increases, then proceed to step 15. If current does not increase, repair the alternator and proceed to step 15. Step 15. Measure the battery voltage directly on the battery posts. If voltage is within 1.0 volts or 0.5 volts of step 11, then return the equipment to service. If the voltage is below step 11 by greater than 1.0 or 0.5 volts, then repair the high cable resistance and return to service. At this point, you will have successfully diagnosed your charging system problem and returned the equipment back to service. Thank you for watching, and as always, your Caterpillar dealer is available to help you with all of your product service needs.